All right, so I'm going to work through the odd problems of this review. That way, if you're still a little confused, you can get some help before having to turn it in. Remember, we do have a test tomorrow. So in this first set of problems, I'm asking you to classify the following sets as of side lengths. So remember, first, you always have to check to see if it's a triangle. So we take our two smallest, I have 20. I'm going to add it to the second smallest, 23. And I need to see if it's greater than the largest, which is 41. So 20 plus 23 gives me 43 which is greater than 41, so I can continue on. Now I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to label A and B. Remember, C is always going to be your longest side. It doesn't matter what's A, what's B. I could have done B then A, but that C has to be the longest one always. So I have 20 squared plus 23 squared is equal to 41 squared. So I'm going to plug that in. 20 squared gives you 400 plus 23 squared gives us 529 and 41 squared is 1681. Your last step, we're going to combine what's on the left. So 400 plus 529 leaves us with 929. And I need to compare it to that number on the right. 929 is less than 1681. So we talked about this in the converse of Pythagorean notes. You think the opposite. So less than means that we have an obtuse triangle. So here I'm looking to see if it's a triangle first, and then I want to classify it as acute, obtuse, or right. So number three is similar. We're first going to start with our sides. So I'm going to take my two smallest, 10 and 20. I'm going to add them together, and I need to see if they're greater than 30. So 10 plus 20 gives me 30. 30 is not greater than 30, so these don't even make a triangle. So I'm going to put not a triangle. You don't go any farther. If they don't make a triangle, we cannot classify it as a triangle. Number five, again, my two smallest are three and 16, so I'm going to add those together and see if they're bigger than my third. So three plus 16 is 19, and 19 is greater than 17, so I can continue. Again, I need to label my A, B, and my C. I know C is my largest side, so 17 will be C, and the other two are A and B. It doesn't matter which is A, which is B. So now I write it out. Three squared plus 16 squared is equal to 17 squared. Three squared gives me nine and 16 squared is 256, and 17 squared or 17 times 17 is 289. So now I compare it, nine plus 256 is 265, which is less than 289. So again here, I have an obtuse triangle. If you don't remember how to do this, you need to make sure that you took the notes of Converse of Pythagorean Theorem. Now number seven, we're gonna check again, 10 plus 24, is greater than 26. 10 plus 24 is 34, which is greater than 26, so I can continue. Now I'm going to have my C is 26, my A and my B is 10 and 24. So 10 squared plus 24 squared is equal to 26 squared. 10 squared is 100, and 24 squared is 576, and it's equal to 26 squared, which is 676. So 100 plus 576 does give me 676. And here, we have that 676 is equal to 676. If this happens, that means that your triangle is a right triangle. If it's a true statement, if they're both equal, it's a right triangle. And finally, the last problem in this section is number 9. So I'm going to check my side lengths again. 1 plus 2 is greater than 3. 1 plus 2 is 3. And 3 is not greater than 3, it's equal to. So again, this is one of those situations where it's not even a triangle, and we stop there. So numbers 10 through 13, you're finding a missing side, but I give you two side links here. So that tells you we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So remember, our Pythagorean, if you don't remember from the first section, is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And remember that c squared or that c is always across from the right angle. It's always the hypotenuse. So I'm going to go ahead and label my sides in number 11. Across from the 90 is 17, so that's my C. And then my two legs are A and B. It doesn't matter which is which. I don't know what A is. It's X. So I'm going to replace it with X squared plus my B is 8. So 8 squared is equal to my C is 17, so 17 squared. From here, I can start simplifying. So I still don't know what X is, so I'm going to leave it as X squared plus 8 squared is 8 times 8 which is 64, and it's equal to 289. Now I go ahead and I subtract 64 from both sides. Cancels out on the left, and I'm left with x squared equals 
you have 289 minus 64 is 225. And your last step here is to actually take the square root of both sides. So x is going to equal the square root of 225, which is just 15. So number 13 is similar. We're given two sides here. I'm going to label everything with a, b, and c first. So I look across from my 90 degree, which is my hypotenuse. So that tells me 16 is c. And my other two legs are a and b. Again, we're looking for one of the legs. So we have x squared plus 9 squared is equal to 16 squared. So I go ahead and simplify that. x squared plus 9 squared is 81. And it's equal to 16 squared, which is 256. I need to solve for x, so I'm going to subtract 81 from both sides. When I do that on the left, it cancels out, and I'm left with x squared is equal to 256 minus 81 is 175. Here we would take the square root of both sides, so we're just going to leave your answer as x is equal to the square root of 175. All right, so we're now going to continue finding missing side lengths, but if you notice here in number 15, I only give you one side length, but I do tell you what the angles in the triangle are, and you notice here there's a 45 and a 90, so that means that third angle has to be 45. So I make my table, I have 45, 45, 90, that stays the same. And from our notes, from our practice, we know that the second row stays the same as well. You have L, L, and L root 2. Now this next part, we want to look at the number that we're given. We're given 25, and it is across from the 45 angle. So on our table, it's going to go under the 45. Sorry, it should be 25. Now 45 and 45 are the same. So if one of them is 25, the other is also 25. Now we are going from left to right, so we are multiplying. And remember, to figure out what we're multiplying by, we compare this middle row. They both have L's, but they don't both have the square root of 2. So that tells us we're going to multiply by the square root of 2. All you do, though, is you replace that L with a 25. So the side length across from the 90 is 25 root 2. I need to now figure out what my X and my Y are. So when I look at X, it's across from the 90. So I'm going to put it above the 90 on our table. And that tells me what X is equal to. X is equal to 25 square root of 2. I'm going to do the same thing with my y. My y is across from the 45. It doesn't matter which 45. When I look under the table under the 45, I see that y is equal to 25. So you'll fill your table out, and then the next part is figuring out what x is and what y is. You've already done the math. You just need to match it with its angle. All right, so for 17, again, we have one side length, but we're given two angles. I have a 45 and a 90, so I know that last one is also 45. So I'm going to set my table up. 45... 45, 90. Remember, your middle row stays the same, so L, L, and L root 2. And when I look at 10 root 2, it's across from the 90. So I'm going to go ahead and write that on my table. Now I'm going to go ahead and write where my X and Y are just for right now. So X is across from a 45, so I'm just going to put it on top of one of the 45s. And my Y is also across from a 45, so I'm going to put it on top of the other one. This will just save us time in the end. Now when I look, I'm going from right to left. So I'm dividing, and remember we're dividing by whatever is different. So I'm dividing by the square root of 2. Now hopefully you have a calculator. If you don't, there are some online calculators. This stuff is easy. So 10 square root of 2 over the square root of 2, all that happens is it cancels out. And I'm only left with that number there. So this is equal to 10. So my L's are both 10. Now I need to list what x and y are, so x, I look at the bottom, is 10, and then we have y, I look at the bottom, it's also 10. They're both of our legs. And number 19 is the last one of this kind. Again, we have a 45, 45, 90 here. You do not have to do this problem. Um, because y'all don't have the calculator I'm asking for, this would get really nasty, so we're actually just going to skip this problem. You also don't have to do number 19 because it's similar to this one. So we just did 45, 45, 90, and we're now going to get into our 30, 60, 90. So I have 60 and 90 here, and 30 is the angle that I'm missing. So I'm going to set my table up, 30, 60, 90. So again, from your notes and assignments, that middle row doesn't change. Under the 30 is L, under the 60 is L, square root of 3, and underneath the 90 is 2L. 
Now, when I look, I want to figure out where u and v are. So u is across from the 60, so I'm going to write it on top of the 60. v is across from the 30, so I'm going to write it on top of the 30. Now I can kind of start solving. I have one side length given 18, and that's across from my 90. So on my table, it goes under the 90. I'm going to go from 90 to 30, right to left, so I'm dividing. And when I look at L and 2L, it's missing the 2. So I'm going to divide 18 by 2. 18 divided by 2 gives me 9. So I have the 30. Now I need to get the 60. So I'm going from left to right, and I'm going to multiply by the square root of 3. All you do, though, is replace that L with a 9. So now the 60 is 9 square root of 3. I just need to list out my answers. So I need to list out U first, and I see that it is 9 root 3. And then I'm going to do the same thing with V. I need to list what V is. I draw the arrow down, see what side goes with that angle, and I find out that V is 9. Now number 23, again we have a 30, 60, 90. 30 was missing, so I'm going to write it in. I'm going to draw out my table, 30, 60, 90. In the middle we have L, L square root of 3, and 2L. Now when I look here, X is across from the 90, so I'm going to write it on top of 90. Y is across from the 30, so it goes on top of the 30. And finally, we're given the side across from the 60. So I'm going to write it under here that 60 is 4 square root of 3. We don't ever deal with 60 and 90. We're going to have to go from 60 to 30 first. So we're going to divide by the square root of 3. All that does is get rid of the square root, and I'm left with the number in front. So my L is 4. And now I'm going to go from 30 to 90, so I'm going to multiply by 2 and I end up with 8. So when I look here, my y is 4, so I'm going to fill that in right here, and my x is 8, so I fill that in here. And now the last one of just this kind is number 25, so I set up my table 30, 60, 90. Again, I'm missing one angle, so I'm going to write it in. And when I look here, my x is across from the 60, so it goes on top. My y is across from the 30, so it goes on top. My middle row stays the same, l, l square root of 3, and 2l. And what I'm given is 4, that's across from the 90. So I write it underneath the 90. I'm going to go from 90 to 30, so I'm going to divide by 2. 4 divided by 2 leaves me with just 2. And now I'm going to go from 30 to 60, so I'm multiplying by the square root of 3, so I end up with 2 square root 3. Now y, I look at the bottom, it's 2. I have x, draw my arrow down, and I see that it is 2 square root of 3, and you are done. Now 26 and 27 are basically the same thing, but we're asking for the perimeter, so there's one extra step. So 27, I notice I have a 45 45, 90 triangle, so I'm going to draw my table like usual. I mean, and remember the top and the middle rows stay the exact same. So I have L, L, and L square root of 2. When I look here, I don't need to list my X and Y, so I'm not going to worry about putting those on top. But I do see that my 2 is across from the 45, so I'm going to write it underneath both 45s because they're the same. Now I'm going from left to right, so I'm multiplying, and I'm multiplying by the square root of 2. So my 90 side length is 2 square root of 2. Perimeter, remember, is when we add all the sides together. So it's just the same as when you learned perimeter the first time. So perimeter is equal to, I take my first side, which is 2. I'm going to add it to my second side, which is also 2. And then finally I'm going to add it to my third side, because it is a triangle, which is 2 square roots of 2. Now, I can combine 2 and 2 together, and that will give me 4 plus 2 square roots of 2. I cannot combine this with the 4. It's like 2x almost. So if they don't look the same, if they don't have the same stuff, you cannot combine them. So your final answer for perimeter would be 4 plus 2 square root of 2. And numbers 28 through 31, these are the word problems, so I'm going to do 29 and 31 with you. So 29 says, a 14 meter long ladder leans against the building. If the ladder makes an angle of 60 degrees with the ground, how far up the wall does the ladder reach? And then how far from the wall is the base of the ladder? 
So for this thing always, you're going to draw your right triangle. Look something like this. I have a right angle. Now it tells me that it makes an angle of 60 with the ground. So this is the ground down here. And this is our ladder. And finally we have the wall of the building. So the ladder and the ground, those two sides together, make an angle of 60. Which means my third angle has to be 30 since it is a right triangle. I also know that the ladder is 14 meters long, so I'm going to label it with 14. We want to find what the wall is, so I'm going to call that X and the ground, which is Y. I can go ahead and set up my table for my 30, 60, 90 here. I have L, L square root of 3, and 2L. Now when I look, X is across from the 60, so I'm going to put that on my table. And then Y is across from the 30. I know that my 90, 14, is across, so I can put that in the table under 90. So 2L is equal to 14. So if I go from right to left, I'm dividing by 2. And in order to do that, 14 divided by 2 gives me 7 for my L. And then I'm going from left to right to find my 60. So I'm multiplying by the square root of 3, so it ends up being 7 square roots of 3. Now we just need to decide. I have x is equal to 7 square root of 3. And when I look at my drawing, x is how tall the wall is. And then y is equal to 7. And remember, that's how far the ladder is from the ground, from the base of the wall, basically. So that's all you're doing here. The hardest part is drawing your picture and labeling it. And then 31 in a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. So that tells me I have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. One leg measures 15 feet long. So remember, this is our hypotenuse across from the 90. And then we have our two legs here. So I know that one of the legs is 15. And since it is a 45, 45, 90, the other leg is also 15. Now I need to find the length of the other leg, which we just did technically, and the hypotenuse. So I'm going to call the hypotenuse x. So 45, 45, 90. You have l, l, and l square root of 2. I am going to call the other leg y as well, just for our end value too. So I know that 15 is across from the 45, so I'm going to put it under both 45s. I need to find that 90 side, so I'm going from left to right, so I'm multiplying by the square root of 2. So the side across from the 90, our hypotenuse, is 15 root 2. So I'm going to list it out. x is equal to 15 square root of 2. And remember from our drawing, that's our hypotenuse. And y is equal to 15, which was just our other leg. So this is the end of your review. You are in charge of the evens. If you're signed up for a mind, I am going to send out those full solutions later.